Pleasure and privilege to welcome Professor Samhong Rinpoche to the cathedral for this discussion uh, on mind training and compassion applied to everyday life. He'll speak to us in a few moments. Um, you don't need me to tell you he's a distinguished scholar uh, and his multilingual capacities and his uh, efforts to be uh, fluent not only in language but uh, in science, uh, in things religious and in things interreligious, cross-cultural. Uh, his important uh, work on study of and authoritative teaching with regard to Gandhi. Um, all of these have impressed so many for so long. Uh, he is actually a young man in terms of his uh, energy and passion, and if you don't know that, you're about to witness it. Uh, and it has been uh, important to all of us that he's also been uh, engaged in this remarkably fruitful enterprise of trying to understand the mind. I mean, it's, it, it's fascinating, especially, frankly, as someone who does not purport to be any kind of expert in Buddhism or even meditation, frankly, but to, to see how right people have had certain elements of this, the core elements of how the mind really works and its relationship to what it means to be fully human and our capacity uh, to connect what we say we value and what we mean to do with what actually happens in our lives. Uh, and so sadly at a time when other people, uh, religious or suggesting they're religious, are among other things discrediting science. Uh, here we have a tradition uh, that holds up under scientific scrutiny and embraces uh, those learnings and uh, in fact informs them. Uh, he also travels extensively, as you know, to gain support for the cause of Tibetan authority and autonomy uh, and with the Dalai Lama to raise awareness um, in that very complex set of negotiations. Uh, that's not our topic tonight. Our topic tonight is to hear how a man who has lived a life of growing consciousness uh, can help all of us to be more fully what we were meant to be. I'm honored to present His Eminence, Sam Hong Rinpoche. You'll speak from here. Most Reverend Dean, Venerable Monks, and dear friends. I have been uh, asked to uh, speak this afternoon, mind training and uh, compassion applied to uh, everyday life. <clears throat> I beg in the beginning your forgiveness that I do not uh, comfortably speak English language. <clears throat> Therefore, my vocabulary is uh, very limited and sometimes I do not uh, able to express myself fully. So please be, bear with me. <clears throat> 
Apart from that, today, my voice is also not very good. I have lost the voice partially since uh, this morning. The topic of uh, discussion is uh, mind training and compassion. To understand the mind is the first requisite to train it. And there are many different concepts of mind. From the Buddhist viewpoint, the mind has a number of uh, different categories and layers. On the one hand, we might uh, categorize the mind, the gross mind, the subtle mind, and the subtlest mind. Within the uh, concept of consciousness, that means a uh, potential to uh, knowing or potential to perceiving external subjects or matters that is called as mind, which is uh, operating the person. <clears throat> what is a person? What is the individual? The uh, concept of individual is uh, a combination of mind, body, and speech. In the Buddhist terminology, this is called as the three doors of action. The body and speech is uh, under the command of mind, and that mind has uh, number of different parts or portions which is at the subtlest level it's uh, stainless clear and nothing uh, contamination is uh, entered into its nature but it's a gross level this mind is uh, polluted or clouded by numerous uh, negative emotions or concepts, a thought process. You can uh, categorize the mind into two groups, the positive mind and the negative mind. Or, on the other way, it can be categorized <coughs> perceiving mind and conceiving mind. The entire conceiving mind is uh, within the category of thought forces, as we usually say. The thought is always dealing with the image, and the perception is always dealing with the reality. Without uh, recognizing identifying one's own various levels of mind, then to train the mind may not be an easy job. In order to train the mind, we have to uh, understand how the mind is uh, functioning or operating at the various levels, and whatever the mind is functioning, its basic source would be the subtlest mind, which may call it a subtlest consciousness, or the continuing, the continuum of the uh, consciousness, which comes from previous life, beginningless, and which goes to the next.
still uh, someone is uh, liberated oneself from the bondage of defilement and karmic force. Even then, the enlightened mind, the continuum of enlightened mind, still continues unceasingly. So therefore, according to a <coughs> Buddhist concept, the consciousness or the mind does not have any beginning and it does not have any end, except few Buddhist tenets belonging to a Sharvakyan, they have a, a conception of ending of mind when individuals enter into the <coughs> near our Sheshnirvan, that means no residue freedom. But that is not accepted by the majority of the Buddhist uh, traditions of the philosophy. Since the mind is uh, flexible and not entered contamination in its nature, whatever developments are temporarily coming from external factors, thereby it is uh, removable. When we take the antidote of negative emotions and practice in that way, the negative emotions or the negative mind can be reduced, suppressed, and finally can be eradicated. For the eradication, perceive the ultimate truth. The ultimate truth means the real nature of the entire phenomenon, how things exist with the help of name and thought without any inherent existence of by its own nature or the wideness of existing by its own nature independently that is the ultimate reality. When you perceive this ultimate reality, then the source of entire negative emotions are completely eradicated. <clears throat> Having said that, what are the <clears throat> basic methods of training the mind? For training the mind, there is a process of learning, examination, and uh, meditative state of mind. <clears throat> At the first level, we need to understand the nature of mind and its negativity and the antidotes of the negativity that shall have to be learned either from hearing from the masters or teachers or reading from books or literature. And this is uh, the first stage of uh, accumulating information that is uh, uh, understanding from hearing. <clears throat> In Sanskrit, we call it Shruti Mai Gyan, uh, understanding inculcated or created from learning or hearing or reading at the stage of receiving the information. That receiving information need to be Pardon? Let him be there. <clears throat> I 
I could not hear his uh, question clearly, but I think he was saying that Tibetan Buddhism has a shurti or no shurti. I, I don't understand what he is referring to no shurti. All the uh, religious tenets within the category of shurti because it can be taught through teacher to disciple. I was referring the process of training the mind at the first level to uh, the uh, <clears throat> accumulation of information through reading or through hearing, and that is the first stage of understanding, and it is within the category of thought forces or knowledge level. And that knowledge has to be examined through analytical meditation. Content political meditation means meditating on the basic information you, which you have acquired through your own material examination and uh, analyzation using various logic and reasoning. Then you reach to a stage of inner realization, adhigam. <clears throat> that inner, inner realization means that what you have accumulated the information at the level of hearing is either correct or incorrect, real or unreal, truth or untruth, and what kind of modification should be done, so on and so forth. Then the second level of understanding, the chintaning my gyan, that means <coughs> uh, understanding acquired from your own analytical meditative mind. <coughs> and that is a, a knowledge which can be considered as uh, authentic, reliable. Only the understanding acquired from the hearing or from reading may not be reliable or authentic. But I have repeatedly said that you don't believe because but I have said it. You have to understand by yourself through analytical meditation and through, through your own logic and examination. This is the real level of understanding from where it begins that cultivation of mind or training of mind real begins because the understanding acquired from hearing alone does not make to uh, transform or to alter the mindset as it is. Then at the second level, you have the uh, knowledge or understanding for your own analytical meditation when you acquire the uh, authentic understanding, then you can begin to meditate. On meditation on it, you will achieve uh, the real perception of the thing, whatever the phenomenon, whatever you are analyzing through the uh, analytic perception of it. That perception is not a, a assumption or just uh, believe or just uh, acceptance, but it is real seeing. Seeing means direct perception. And that transforms your mind. So this is a process of training the mind. And uh, this process also have, uh, when it reaches to the uh, meditative level, grossly it would be three different kind. 
a meditation which is uh, in the nature of uh, cultivating the mind and uh, another meditation which is in the nature of uh, practicing the concentration, concentrative stability to be achieved. And uh, the third category is uh, a meditation of visualization. Visualization means visualize something which may not be there in reality, but in the mind picture, you can visualize something. Real purpose of training the mind, the meditation of visualization or meditation, a kind of facilitator. The real meditation you have to do is uh, the nature of cultivation. Nature of cultivation means you have to rely on much more on the analytical meditation than the concentrative meditation. Your mind is uh, in nature pure and un contaminated, but temporarily your mind is diluted with hate, anger, lust, greed, attachment, and so on, all these negative emotions uh, might happen <clears throat> and it always arising to a default the real and uh, the cultivation means are opposite of compassionate mind, love and uh, nature of uh, emotion, particularly the compassionate mind is being uh, distorted or being destroyed or being kept away by a feeling of uh, hate and uh, anger. Hate and anger is uh, the real cause of